Well, there's got to be a better way to fade that intro music in and out, right? Haven't figured it out yet, but I did find some new graphics and spent some time this evening after work getting all of my little scenes and things. Kind of give them a refresh because I feel like it's time to switch things up a little bit with some color. So that's what I did today after work. Happy Friday, everybody. I don't know why I'm holding a seam ripper like this. It is definitely meant not meant to be a threatening manner. So I will just set that down. Happy Friday, everybody. I am really excited to kick off the weekend. I've got some wonderful projects lined up for Saturday and Sunday, all day sew sessions planned in my home. And tomorrow we're going to start that by sewing with Sean, the guy who sews over on his channel. So if you guys aren't already checking him out, if you haven't seen his content, if you don't know who he is, excl exclamation mark Sean in the chat will get you a link over to his YouTube channel. And I will be sewing with him tomorrow morning while I make a little bit of progress on my panda quilt. Tonight I will be working on dun, 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 designer mystery quilt. So these are block of the months that I thoroughly enjoy doing. And if I'm being completely honest with you, I've had several of them. I've had the lovely experience of doing multiple of these this year, not 2023s, but prior years, because in previous years I have signed up for these and I never finished them. So as a result, they've been sitting on my UFO shelf. And so if you've been around my channel at all, you know that my goal for 2023 is any of the block of the months that I started the year with, I want those finished. And I am rounding the corner in 2023. And I'm also rounding the corner in the last couple of block of the months. I can't wait to see all of these done. So most of what I've been doing over the past several weeks have been these blocks for the designer mystery block of the months. But this is the current one. This one just started the summer. This is the 2023 block of the month. It is using the um, sunny side fabric from Camille Ross Kelly. And this month, the block is designed by Corey Yoder. So I'm really excited to show you how this is going to come together. I've already starched and cut out all my fabric and everything's ready to go. So that's what I'm going to work on tonight. And then after we finish the block, after we finish sewing through this, we will do a little bit of show and tell. So if you want to show the rest of the world via my YouTube channel what you're working on tonight, whether it's knitting or crocheting or scrapbooking or cuddling with your dogs or sewing or quilting, whatever it is that you're doing, feel free to post a picture over on my Facebook group. You can get the link to that as exclamation Facebook. Just snap a picture with your phone, upload it to the group, and we'll get to that a little bit later in the evening. And then of course, as everybody knows, Donna from Handmade by Ying does go live after I do. And I think tonight she's going to try to overlap. That way, if I do end early, y'all have somewhere to go and you don't have to sit around twiddling your thumbs waiting for her to start. So I think she's going to start tonight at 930. All right, that's all I've got. I'm going to go to the overhead view, which I also tweaked and I'm kind of jazzed about. And we're just going to get started sewing. So here we go. Look at this. <gasps> That transition. Am I right? I'm right. I'm going to plug my phone in because the battery's at like 50%. I'm just going to move it out of the way. And I've got my iron heated up or heating up. Move my mouse out of the way. You like my little guy hanging out over here? Is that cool? Is that neat? He's just smiling at you while we do a little sewing. <laughs> uh, Kathy said, Becca, you prompted me last week to work. 
the finishing part of the mystery quilt block. Awesome. Awesome. I'm so glad. Ellen says, I'm in bed watching. No one wants to see that. <laughs> You'd be surprised. I, I like, I'll, I'll be in bed. I, that sounded very freaky. I'll just stop. <laughs> I'll just stop. Um, so that I'm not turning my back to you throughout the process of this. I'm going to bring my little pressing board over here. No, I did not make it. I always get that question. Did you make your board? No, but I did recover it. And I love it because it has feet on the bottom that keep it up off of my cutting mat so that it doesn't warp it. So it's my, uh, this is my go-to. All right. And this time we're going to try to not put the pattern in full view for everybody to see like we did last week. Am I right? I'm right. So I'm going to set it over here out of the way. All right, so to start, it wants us to grab our D fabric and our F fabric. And I just got to do a little digging through here to find it. So the D fabric is a white triangle and the F fabric is this green rectangle. I'm sorry, triangle. I meant square. Whatever. You know what I meant. We're going to make four flying geese units out of this. So I'm just going to take this and start sewing. Donna says, hello from the very, very windy coast of North Carolina. Yeah, we're getting some weather, aren't we? We are getting some weather. I think all we'll be getting up here is just rain, but hopefully everybody stays safe and warm and dry tonight. Oh, thank you, Mary. I appreciate that. I actually had Jason come in. She says, I appreciate, ugh, sorry. Mary said, hey, Becca, loving the, the new intro and overhead cam position. Yeah, so the overhead camera position, I actually had Jason come in and I was like, hey, can you help me? Like, I know what I'm trying to do. And I told him a couple, like what I was trying to do with getting the camera lined up just right. And I explained it to him and he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I showed him what I had and he was like, oh, you need to move it over here. And I was like, ah, oh, that makes sense. Uh, Bill is asking where my mom is. My mom is at home in Southwest Virginia and she and my stepdad actually have the C word. So they are taking care of themselves and trying to heal up. Hello, Lori. Susan says, I have nothing to share this week. No finished projects. Been working in Hocus Pocus for the 2021 spooky box from the Fat Quarter Shop. Awesome. Don't forget next weekend we're going to do a collab too. So I've got all the all these collabs coming up. Only two really. But tomorrow I'll be live with Sean on his channel working on my panda quilt. Probably going to continue working on those eye units. And then next week on the 30th I will be live with Ian, Teresa, and uh, Tiffany on Ian's channel. And we'll be doing something. I don't even know what I'm doing yet. Is that bad? That's bad. It's bad. It's totally bad. So I'll have to figure that out. But also next weekend, I will be at the Sewing Expo in Fredericksburg, Virginia. If you are going to be there, feel free to stop over and say hi. I'm going to be there both Friday and Saturday. I'm taking Friday off of work to go. I will be in a couple of classes on Friday and then one in the morning on Saturday. I think Jason's going to be down there for a bit on Saturday with me, but we'll be leaving the expo by probably about two or three on Saturday, I think it is. So Friday, I will probably be down there a good part of the day. It does, Bill. Bill says, no way that stinks for them. Yes, yes, indeed. It sure does. But mom's Mom was recovering. I talked to her a couple of days ago. I probably owe her a phone call tomorrow to see how she's doing. She's She has one day good and then a, another day bad. It just keeps going back and forth. Hello, Sheila. <laughs> Sheila said, I, I have the playback speed on 2x until I catch up and it's hilarious. <laughs> All right. Donnell says, I need a chaperone to the fabric store from now on. I went shopping tonight for fabric, walked out $300 later. Hi, my name is Donnell Stitchery and I'm addicted to fabric. <laughs> Ooh, Susie says, hey, Becca, I am heating up the iron to press batiks for the Cluck Cluck Sew 
pumpkin quilt. Very cool. I like Cluck Cluck Sews patterns. I have a little table runner book that is chock full of probably about six or seven, maybe even more table runners, or I guess you can make them placemats or wall hangings that are good for all these different seasons. I got it in a ginger quilter box sometime last year, I think. And I think that you just reminded me that I had it. I completely forgot that I had it. But that would be really neat to pull out and maybe make a fall themed or a Christmas themed table runner before the season gets here. Christine says, I'm cutting orange fabric scraps to make pumpkin mug rugs for the quilters at our upcoming retreat. And I just realized the best part of this whole thing. There. I forgot I had turned off the picture in picture. I don't know why I turned that off, but look, now you can see me instead of just what I'm working on. Mm. Holly says, just joining. Hello, everyone. Hello, Holly. Free Spirit says, cootie season is beginning. That is the truth, right? Like, if it's not the C word, it's the other C word. One has a V in it. The other one stands for cooties. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Marie says, what is that pen thing that you're using on the scene, please? So this is an amazing innovation that I have seen several other quilters on YouTube use. I've known about it for a while. I did a video on it. I really should do an updated video on it. So look for that to come out soon. But this is called the Acorn Easy Press Pen. I'll hold it this way so that you can see it a little bit better. What it basically is, is a marker with like a highlighter nib in it. I'm going to try to get it to focus. Focus! 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 No? No focus? Fine, whatever. So it's a pen and it works like this. This nib, which it's apparently not going to focus on, this nib gets it holds the liquid from inside the pen. So when you're applying the liquid to your fabric, you literally push the nib in and it gets the nib wet. So you can see there's a little bit of liquid right there. And then look, I'm coloring starch onto the block. It puts liquid onto your seam line. So that's the pen, but the pen comes with, I have a big bottle of it over here. The pen comes with a, um, bottle of concentrated starch. They call it the Acorn Easy Press Fabric Treatment. It's basically starch in there. And so you take the cap off of this side and you squeeze the liquid into the pen. And I might as well top it off while I've got it open. So you just go like this, like that. And then you put the lid back on it tighten it up and you're good to go. And so what this does is it helps starch just the seams on my blocks. I started using this, I knew about it a few years ago and I was like, yeah, it's way too finicky. Why would I even do that? But here's the beauty of it. It works so good for FPP. It really, really, <laughs> Debbie, I'm making me laugh. You said, I saw Ian short rating your Tula stash today. So funny, yeah, he's hilarious. Um, I really liked it for FPP. It was actually Donna from Handmade by Ying. It was, she had mentioned that I should use it for that. And I had a couple of those systems, but I had given them away, both of them actually to Mary. And I was like, hey, Mary, remember that pen thing I gave you? And she was like, yeah. I was like, can I get it back? <laughs> So she gave a, she gave one of them back to me and I was using it for FPP, but I really liked the results that I was getting with my FPP blocks and I kind of made it a muscle memory thing. And so now every time I, oops, I didn't get that right in the corner where I needed it to be. Um, every time I press my seams, I've been doing that because that saves me from spritzing that whole piece of fabric with best press. Cause all I really want is for my seam to be really nice and flat and crisp. So the, the Acorn Easy Press Pen allows me to achieve that. Now I have heard some people say that they feel like the Acorn solution is a little expensive. I, 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 I don't know how much it costs because I uh, just bought it and I'm still using what I had. 
but I know some people have talked about replacing the best press solution in their pen with things like best press or some other liquid starch. And I was actually thinking about this today. You could actually, if you had two of those pens, you could put water in one and use that on the back of your FPP blocks to help pull out the paper from the back of your FPP blocks and the other one could be starch. Just make sure to label which one's which because I would hate to see you waste all your starch or your easy press pen solution on just getting paper wet. <laughs> By the way, Katie, thank you so much for that tip. I did see that. I was just in the middle of talking, but I do appreciate your generosity. Thank you for that $25 tip. That's very kind of you. And you can just buy a pack of nibs to replace that too. Yes, you can. So as the nib gets worn down and you're thinking you need a new one, you don't have to buy a whole new pen. You can just buy new nibs and they pop right out and you put the new one in. It is an amazing tool and I am super happy to have it as one of my go-to notions. I did not understand how, how much of a difference it could make. You can pick these up over at Fat Quarter Shop or Missouri Star. I have affiliate links to both, and I believe, and they're on my website. They're also in the description box down below this video, but I believe my affiliate link to Missouri Star also will get you 15% off of your order through the end of the month to help celebrate birthday bash. So there you go. Sheila says the Clover version of that pen only uses a few drops when you refill. In the end, it's not that expensive. I did see that Clover has a version of this pen. I have not tested it out because, as I said, I already had this one, so I'm using what I have. But I will tell you, when I looked at the price comparison for the entire kit between the Acorn and the Clover system, this one doesn't really use a lot of liquid. It's not using tons. It's just a drop or two when you push the nib. Um, but I will tell you, when I priced out the entire system, the Clover system just had the pen and the liquid, and the Acorn system came with two replacement nibs, one pen with a nib already in it, and a bottle of solution with more ounces in it than the Clover one did, and it felt like you were getting a better value for the Easy Press Pen system than you would for the Clover system based on the amount of items that you were getting and the price you were paying. But that's just my opinion. You use whatever notion works for you. Hello, Shelby. She says, hi everyone, I'm just listening tonight. I hope everyone is having a great weekend. The other part of how I'm keeping my seams nice and flat though is this clapper. So you'll see I draw that starch on my seam. <laughs> And then I put the clapper onto it. And as we talked about last week, I have decided to call this my heat sucker because <laughs> that's exactly what this thing does. It just sucks the heat right out of the fabric and helps it cool in a super flat position. And these two things, plus a good starch of my block at the very end is how I get my blocks to lay super flat and be super, super crisp. Oh, wow. Jane went to Missouri Star Birthday Bash yesterday and asked for the pen and they had not heard of it before. Is it online? Interesting. Um, I, I don't know. I just assumed that Missouri Star would have everything. I'm pretty sure Fat Quarter Shop has this. If they do not, uh, I'm sure they will shortly if y'all start asking for it. But what I will do is in the description box of this video, as well as in the Facebook group, I'll put links to where you can get this exact product. I had a few of them. I was going to sell them. Um, they, I had them. I just never did. I ended up keeping them for myself. <laughs> Sorry. All right. I'm going to square these up. Hi, Karen. I'm not sure uh, that something you'll have to look at in your YouTube settings, your YouTube account. I can't change it. Like I can't. So Karen's asking, I don't know why I don't have a flower after my name. So the flower, the green names and the flowers icon that you guys are seeing, those are people that are paying 
monthly, a recurring tip on my YouTube channel. That YouTube calls them channel memberships. You're basically tipping automatically every, every month. That's handled entirely by YouTube. So I would check your YouTube memberships in your account settings to see if everything's okay. Sometimes things can get a little wonky over there, but I don't have any control over that. So I would check your account first. Wow, Paula says it, Missouri Star does not have it in their inventory. Interesting. Wonder if Fat Quarter Shop does. Can somebody do a quick check over at Fat Quarter Shop? And if you buy it, please use my affiliate link. I would love that. Thank you. Just search Acorn. <coughs> yeah, I could see Kimberly you using it. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Ellen says, I've had to put myself in timeout until I made it to, <laughs> she's not buying anything because she went a little crazy in the store. I hear you. I am on a no buy until November. That's, <laughs> you heard no buy November, no shave November. I'm on no buy until November. I can't buy anything right now. No, no, don't have the funds for it right now. So I hear you. FQS has all components in stock. Awesome. Amazon has it too. I do have an affiliate link with Amazon as well. So if you choose to buy it from Amazon, I would love it if you would use my affiliate link, which is also on my website and in the description box down below. All right, so I didn't really need much off of all of these, but I did trim them just a little bit and I saw a couple of these are gonna be just a tad shy. So I need to be a little bit more precise when I'm sewing corner to corner. I normally just use my diagonal seam tape, but when I'm talking and sewing at the same time, I can be a little, maybe not, right where I need to be. So perhaps using my pen to mark my seams while I'm on a live might not be a bad idea. Once I have made, uh oh, I got to make more, four more flying geese. I was, I was about to be like, oh no, I did something wrong. No, I've got some more rectangles in here with these. We're going to make four flying geese units of this. Debbie says, I have been trying not to buy all year and over, oh, Oh, I'm not going to say it out loud, but our Ferrarco, oh man, is my mic like really hot to y'all? It looks like it's clipping into the red. So let me fix that. So I'm not hurting your eardrums. Is that better? I hope that's better. Um, but our Ferrarco has a message in the chat about a spoiler alert for this month's sew sampler box, which I have not got yet. So spoiler alert. Should get it any day now though. Okay, so by the way, do you know my trick to see if I sewed my corners right? Let me show it to you. This is so cool, right? So I don't have to mark. I use my line on my machine and my diagonal seam tape to line everything up. So I'm gonna put my square onto my rectangle. I'm gonna bring it over to my machine and I know you can't see my needle, but what I'm doing is putting the corner in right at the needle and then the other corner, which is down here, I'm putting this on the red line of my diagonal seam tape and I'm gonna start stitching, sister. And the whole time I'm holding that bottom point that was closest to me right on that line all the way up. So the red line on the diagonal seam tape, but I continued that line by gouging and then marking inside of it with a Sharpie that center line on the bed of my machine. So I just keep that point there. And then once I've sewn it, I come over and I push it up ever so gently. And I just crease it down with my finger. I'm gonna look for two things. The first one is I'm going to make sure that that little piece that I just folded up completes this right angle from the top as well as from the back. If I see something like this from the back, 
where that fabric is poking over, I know I sewed too far to the right. If I see something like this, where it doesn't fully complete that right angle, then I know I sewed too far to the left of that center and I need to fix it. So that's my trick for making sure that I have snowballed. I've done my stitch and flip accurately without having to worry. And typically what I'll do is I'll fold and test, and I didn't do it in the last one, but I will fold and test before I trim. And that way, if it's off too much, I have a chance to fix it without cutting new fabric. So we'll do that again. Push this over, crease it with my finger, and it looks perfect. All my raw edges are nice and lined up. Isn't that great? Game changer, right? Nancy says, my grandson says hi to my computer, waiting for an answer back from you. Oh no, I missed what happened. I didn't see what he said. Does somebody have it? What's your grandson's name, Nancy? Hello, Nancy's grandson. What was the question? I missed it. I was too busy sewing. Oh, wait, somebody saw it. <laughs> Mary said, you got a shipping notification today for Fat Quarter Shop. <laughs> oh, is it just he says hi and he was waiting to hear me say hi back? Was that it? I hope so. Hello, Nancy's grandson. What's his name? And if you don't want to say, that's fine. I get it. Oh, his name is Bradley. I have a cousin named Bradley. We call him Brad. And occasionally we call him Bard. Hello, Bradley. How old is Bradley? And does he help you sew? Joan says, goodie for the sew sampler box. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> you guys are all talking about the spoilers on the sew sampler box. I can't do that yet. I don't want to ruin it for somebody who might be watching the replay. So spoiler alert, if you're watching this on the replay and you don't want to know what's in the sew sampler box, don't read the live chat right now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So funny. <laughs> Debbie Road says we have a shop hop coming up. Ten shops, nine towns, and I'm saving my money for that. Oof. I am saving my money for Quilt Con. Because there's going to be some vendors there. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> Where's my pen? There, I'm gonna put my seam ripper up there because maybe if it's proudly on display, I won't have to use it again. Shoop, shoop. If I know I've got Ian here and I'm guessing he's probably going to be on a computer. So let's do a little fun thing because I know several of you out there have been starting YouTube channels recently and I would love the chance to promote all of you. So if you are somebody who has a channel that you are now trying to upload content to and you would love it if people would check it out, put a heart emoji in the chat and slowly... We'll give my mods, both Mary, Tiffany, and <laughs> I just saw her pop up, Mary, Tiffany, and Ian, a chance to catch up with you. They will tag you and put a link to your channel in the chat so that people can hop over there and check it out. And if they like what they see, they can subscribe. Hello, Heather. Hope you're recovering nicely. <laughs> Tiffany said, I'm saving for QuiltCon in a week at your house. Listen, you don't have to spend any money at my house, but you should save for QuiltCon. And don't worry, I already have all sorts of ideas for how I'm going to keep you busy. <laughs> that sounded nefarious, didn't it? <laughs> it sounds like uh, Nancy's uh, grandson does help sew, by the way. Looks like the Quilting Compound has a channel they want to share. Danelle's Stitchery has a channel they want to share. I know Katie, the Greenland Quilter, has a channel. Of course, all of my mods have channels. Tiffany, Ian, Teresa, Sean, and Donna. 
Mary does not have a channel, but she lives vicariously through mine. <laughs> I'm ready for you to come back, Mary. My weekends are not the same without you here. I've been doing tons of sewing and no talking. <laughs> Maybe that's a good thing. I had a lot to do. Hello, Mert. Welcome to Friday night. No worries, Mary. Ian and Tiffany have got it. They're good. They're good. So I'm going to double check. Oh, Memoirs of a Long Arm Quilter has a channel too. You guys can drop. That would be great. It is great to have quilting friends, isn't it, Katrina? I mean, I am enjoying my alone time sewing, but I am also ready for some quilty friends to come visit me. I'm just saying, like, they know who they are. Mary. Come visit me, Mary. Hey, I bet if you get in your car and start driving now and I get my car and start driving, we could meet up before tomorrow. <laughs> Susan says, I'm sitting here marking diagonal lines for sewing half square triangle units. Oh, that's the best part about having somebody on Zoom or YouTube or in person to just hang out with when you have to do that mindless thing where you're just repeating the line over and over and over again, it can allow your mind to wander and you forget about how mundane that task might be. Makes it a little bit like I like I like creating, but if I have to do the same thing a hundred different times, I get a little tired of it a little quick. Can be a little repetitive. Y'all, I've been listening. Okay, so I like true crime. No, there's no way to hide that. I like true crime podcasts. I like true crime shows. I like all of those things. And I pay for a monthly membership to Discovery Plus. And there was um, an episode of a show that I'm watching. And I can't remember what the name of the show is. Because I, I just turned it on. It was on the true crime tab. So I was like, okay, that sounds good. We're going to watch this. And... I have seen the meme uh, going around social media where the lady's sitting at her machine and she's sewing and you can tell she's listening to a podcast about true crime. And she was like, they're, they're telling a story about how she would whittle away her sewing machine for hours on end alone in her sewing room, which made her the perfect candidate <laughs> to go missing but that came like that what that came out in an episode that I was watching of some true crime. I don't remember what it was. And it wasn't that bad, but they were like, she was a quilter and she f loved to spend her time being crafty. And I was like, oh my gosh, is this going the direction of that meme that we've seen on TikTok and stuff? I don't know. I don't know. Flo Renfro says, is that right? I said that wrong. Flo says, I'm going to my first quilt con. I live about 30 minutes from Raleigh. Yay. Awesome. I'm glad to see you there. Debbie says, I like using tape instead of drawing lines for small ones. The bigger ones I have to draw. Hello, Sherry Bridwell. All right. Now I'm going to square these up. So when I square these up, I know I've talked you through this before, but I'll just do it again. I find the 45 degree line. I like to put my flying geese upside down when I do it the first time. I put the 45 degree line right on that seam. And then I just measure and clean up. And I'm making sure that my point is a quarter inch away from the edge of the ruler when I do that. And I'll turn it around and do the other side. I usually only get, see, when I'm stitching the right way, that's all I get off of my, yeah, isn't that great? That like that, that's dead on. Like that's a perfect quarter of an inch, right? Well, actually it's not even a quarter of an inch because I did a stitch and flip. Oh, I cheated. Nope, there's a thread. 
Amanda says, I'm going to Quilt Con with about 10 other members of my guild. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for you too. I will be at Quilt Con Wednesday night, be getting there after work sometime. And then I will be there with Tiffany and Ian and Mary. And I think there are several others there. I think Donna's going to be there too. We're going to be there Wednesday through Monday morning. We're going to leave Monday morning and come back, I believe is the plan. I think Sean from The Guy Who Sews is coming in just for the day on Saturday. But I know, like, no, there's tons of people excited about Raleigh. And I think it's going to be even more crowded than Atlanta was. Because I don't feel like Atlanta was very crowded. But I think there's going to be a good turnout in Raleigh this year. Which makes me very excited and hopeful that perhaps next... Well, it won't be next year. Next year is going to be in Phoenix. But maybe the next year after that or... Maybe two years after that, they'll do another Raleigh trip because Raleigh, North Carolina is a whole lot easier for me to get to than Atlanta. I'm just saying. Although if it's ever in Atlanta again, I will be flying. <laughs> just not driving that. Okay. Becca, you could have just nipped off those loose threads and had those squared up. I know. But, whatever, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Have you seen how good looking into, wait. <laughs> okay, I get it. So Bill said, Becca, have you seen how good looking Ian's quilt con suite made? <laughs> Bill, I'm married. <laughs> And I'm pretty sure that Ian's sweet mate is not interested in married women. <laughs> oh. I, sorry, I'm reading the chat and like, oh, what's going on? <laughs> and Flo said, I said, hit the name right Renfro so awesome all right so these units we're going to literally just stitch them side by side according to the pattern so this is where my quarter inch will come into play but remember we're a little wonky here so we just want to make sure our our one piece is a couple threads shy so I'm just going to be a little careful while I'm sewing there's one set <laughs> Ian says, I hear my sweet mate <laughs> throws wild bodies. <laughs> okay, you guys, I got to tell you a story about Bill. So Bill is in my VIP program, which means he attends our monthly VIP Zoom sessions and our quarterly uh, Zoom retreats that are for a weekend every three months. And while we were on a Zoom, he showed this shell that he has somewhere in his house that has beautiful vintage sewing machines on it because apparently his dad used to restore old machines or still restores old machines, something like that. But the takeaway here is that there is a beautiful white feather weight on the shell that is just absolutely gorgeous. And so I, by the way, we're going to press the seam open. I, every time I see Bill, give him a hard time about that and ask him when he's going to send me the white feather weight. And it was just like on Zoom that I was saying that. And then I think I let it slip in a live stream one time. I was like, oh yeah, Bill, by the way, I didn't get my tracking number for my white feather weight. Can you check into that? <laughs> I thought I was being funny. I don't know if Bill thought I was being funny, but Bill totally <laughs> took the bait. He totally took the bait and he sent me a package and uh, I'm sitting at home. I just got home from work and I get a message from him on, on Facebook Messenger that says, hey, your white singer featherweight shows delivered to the address listed on your website. And I said, Oh my gosh, Bill, you did not. I hope you know I was just joking. It was all in good fun. And he was like, you heard me. 
And so I went, I was like, oh no, oh no. I was like, I hope it's like a keychain or a picture or like a thank you card or a greeting card with a picture of it on it or something. Because if I show up and there's actually that amazing machine sitting at the post office, I'm going to feel horrible. So I go to the store and I go in and when the lady brought the package around, I was like, okay, that is definitely not the sewing machine. Cause it was like a little padded envelope. I opened it up. He bought me an enamel pen, an enamel pin of a white singer featherweight from the featherweight shop and had it sent to me. <laughs> I was like, all right, Bill, touche, you win. <laughs> it is now proudly displayed in my sewing room on a little pin mat that somebody made for me a couple of years ago. I've got all sorts of enamel pins that I've collected on there. And that one is right in the middle. It's just really, it really is very pretty. And I am, I'm quite happy to have it, even though it's not the real one. Just saying. <laughs> Debbie says, I live in Georgia, but I didn't go to Atlanta because I hate finding parking. That's one of the great things about the Houston <clears throat> show I will gladly pay for valet parking. We drove to Atlanta. It was a horrible drive. It wasn't uh, it wasn't bad, but it was a long drive. We drove to Atlanta and then parked the car at the hotel and never looked back. <laughs> you did. You sent me a white featherweight. You're not lying. It was not not an actual machine though, but I'm just saying. <laughs> Tina says, I'm planning to try to go to QuiltCon in Raleigh, North Carolina, driving from East Texas, and we'll get to meet my two great granddaughters who live south of Raleigh. Wow. All right. Now, ooh, Flicky Cheeky's taking us to the grocery store. Hey, everybody, we're at the grocery store. Pick up some peaches. Mm hmm. All right, so there we go. That's what we're gonna make that way. And this does give me a size that this should measure to. So I'm gonna just double check to make sure that these are where they should be because this is what's gonna test my quarter of an inch. So this says it should be eight and a half inches wide and this ruler is exactly eight and a half inches wide. And would you look there. I don't know if you can see that, but there ain't nothing there. I'll show you by doing nothing. And, oh gosh, it always makes me nervous when people cut like this. Anybody else, like, literally flinching? There's nothing. 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 So, I'm just going to do a spot check to make sure that they're not too short or not too long. Yep, that one looks good. If it was, then this would be a great opportunity to pull the seam ripper out and fix it. Actually, if it was too long, I would just have to stitch next to the line. But if it's too short, I would have to rip and redo. Ooh, ice cream. Becca, what kind of wood is your clapper made of? I don't remember, but I can tell you it is from a local artisan called Hard Rock Woodworks. And if you do exclamation clapper in the chat, it'll take you to his Etsy shop and you can buy one for yourself. Is there a chance that QuiltCon will be in the Midwest at some point? Listen, I'll tell you this. Next year is the first year it's ever been in Raleigh. So maybe, you never know. Uh, they always announce next year's location in the spring. So, sorry, the following year's location. So you usually have like a year and a half, almost two years to prepare for the next location. So 2024, is in Raleigh 2025 we already know is in Phoenix and we should expect in April March April time frame they will announce the location for 2026 TBD okay so those are these units hello I love to sew oh okay the next step is going to be grabbing these triangles E and H and cutting on the diagonal twice and then fabric A 
there should be two of them cutting on the diagonal once. So I've got this ruler from Soya actually that will go across my block nicely. So I'll just sail through that, carefully pick this up, and turn this this way. Oh no, I feel like that one was a little off. There's a little blunt tip. So these two pieces are not going to be exact, but it should hopefully still be okay. Usually when Fat Quarter Shop has us do this in a block of the month, we're going to end up making something too big and sizing down a little bit. So we'll just, we'll see what happens. See if we can make that work. This one was perfect. All right. So those are those units. And then these I just cut on the diagonal once. All right. We're gonna make four units that have our H fabric like this and our E fabric like this. So we're going to pair them up so that they're ready to go to the sewing machine and put them right sides together and lay them as though they would be ready to go right under the machine so I don't get things turned around the wrong way to. What's the appro appropriate time for a long armor? Claudia wants to know. I took a quilt in and she said it would be a month. I called her back after six weeks and she said it, she would start it tomorrow. It's now been 14 weeks. Oh my gosh, Claudia. I, listen, I know life happens. I don't know your long armor situation. So I can't, I, I don't want to say anything wrong. However, I am always an advocate for open and transparent communication. If you have put time and money into a quilt and you hand it off to a long armor, long armor and they tell you it will be a month turnaround, I know things happen, but the least they could do is call you and give you the option to take your quilt somewhere else or just know that they didn't forget about it, they didn't lose it, they didn't mess it up, they just are backlogged. Um, <sighs> I, I sometimes, Beth does a lot of my quilts for me right now. She's about three to four weeks out, but every long armor is different. It depends on their workload. I, I know like some places are already months out because of the Christmas season. So I can't tell you what the right amount of time is. It sounds like the bigger issue that you have is a communication issue. But 14 weeks does sound a little excessive. This is going to be pressed over to fabric E, which is the green triangle here. <laughs> Wait, what, what, Disneyland? Oh, I wanna to go to Disneyland, let's go. I love me some Disney. Let's go, I'll go Disney World, Disneyland, Disney Paris, like just Disney, let's go. Oh no, that didn't stitch all the way through. Let's uh, try that again, shall we? That did it. Okay. So these are all small enough pieces that I can kind of get them all under the clapper and press them at the same time. So I am going to draw my starch on the seam. And then I'll get my clapper ready my iron and I'll get everything up under there 
and let the clapper set that while I look to see what my next step is. My next step is going to take these triangles and put them on the opposite side to make squares. Perfect. Boop, 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 boop. Uh, Sheila says, Claudia, sometimes quilts that should take an afternoon end up taking days because the piecing is so bad and it's easy to get really backlogged. I'd ask her what's going on. Yep. Like, I, I think it's completely fair for things to come up, but she could have let you know, right? I don't think you should have to be the one that always reaches out to ask what's going on. Mary says, I'm sitting on my mom's floor cutting out my month seven blocks for Among the Stars again. Awesome. All of my blocks are done and my quilt is ready for the borders, which I've got to make a decision on. I think I'm going to end up doing the borders that the pattern calls for because that border is what drew my eye to the quilt. I think I'm going to end up rip, like ripping the band-aid and doing it. And I think I'm going to quilt that one myself. I'm just going to do an all over design on it. Oh boy. I feel like this is going to end up being a bad square. These sizes, these pieces are definitely not the same size. Oh well, we'll square it up and see what happens. Wow, Susie says, I know a long armor that was one and a half years out. She would make a list, call clients one month from their due date so they could get their quilts done. She did everything by hand, though, no computer. Is that Angela Walters? I would love to have a quilt quilted by Angela. Like, oh, and I would never wash it. It would always hang on my wall and there would be no other quilt that would ever go in rotation. <laughs> it would just be that one. Congrats. I wanted to go, but I work weekends. Oh no. So I'm pressing these with my finger first. And then I'm going to come in and do the starchy, starchy, clappy, clappy, thingy, thingy. Oh, you bought a different, uh, Mary says, I bought a different fabric for from that line to make the border and I'm just going to plan to use the red moda. We got a red moda solid by the bolt that the two of us split. She's going to use that for the back of her quilt instead. Awesome. Ah, uh, Susie said the quilter was not Angela Walters. Her first name was Michelle. Very cool. Some long armors do the quilts for big shows and are many, many months out as those usually get priority. Uh, Georgia says, Angela only quilts for Tula and her classes or YouTube these days. That's fine, but she can make an exception for me, right? Probably not. <laughs> All right, so this is going to square to two and a half by two and a half. Let's, ooh, I love it. Oddly enough, when I put a half square triangle unit down and I find that it is like, literally really big, really oversized. So here's what I'm doing to square this one up. I can't just put it on that 45 degree line because I have this seam to worry about, right? And so what I'm doing is putting the 45 degree line on the seam that, sep on the seam that separates the white from this part over here. And then one half of two and a half 
is one and a quarter. So I'm looking for this center point where these two fabrics meet up, which is one and a quarter. And I'm making sure that that one and a quarter inch mark is looking right in the middle. So that's my bullseye. Once all of those are in line, then I will trim. And in this case, I know I'm gonna have to trim all four sides, not just two. So I'll trim, flip. And now this time I'm going to look for my 45 degree line. I'm going to look for my two and a half inch line and I'm going to look for that bullseye, that one and a quarter. And there we go. Boom. Look at that. Crisp like butter. I'm quiet while I'm lining this up because I want to make sure it's on there the right way. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. These are the ones that I feel like were going to be too big. So I'm worried, like these were grossly big. <laughs> like, look, look at that. That's, it's a lot to cut off of the block. So now I'm really nervous about the next two. I hope those aren't going to be too small. We'll see. Although, like I said, the directions at Fat Quarter Shop gives you are usually pretty good. So we'll see. Okay. 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 We're going to be okay, maybe? Maybe? Yeah, this one's going to be good. I'm going to cut off a lot, but in the end, it's going to be okay. Yes. I love it when a plan comes together. Boom. 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 I don't know why I keep saying boom. One and a quarter. Yes, this is the fourth one. And I'm gonna get a two and a half inch square out of it. Oh my gosh, you know what that means? I didn't mess up the blocks. Yes, yes. Y'all are gonna have nightmares about that now. You're gonna be laying in bed hearing me go, Yes. Look at that. How stinking awesome is that? Close that rotary cutter. I do not want to bleed on a live stream. Thank you. All right. Next up, we're going to take these and these and we're going to make four. Oh, no. We're going to take these and these. And we're going to make four flying geese units with two separate fabrics. So we'll do these first. <laughs> Wait. All right. I have to make sure that I start here. I go this way. This way. I don't know the words for this, but I need to go this way. Because this one has to be on the right-hand side. So I can't just sew starting in any direction. I have to sew this away this away like that there's one sew it on the right start in the top middle and go down to the lower right i'm really saying that for myself not for you get everything lined up and then you stitch Becca, do you talk to yourself sewing when you are not filming? No, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't, actually. <laughs> actually, it's quite quiet <laughs> in here when I'm sewing and nobody else is around. I usually have music playing or another YouTube channel or um, honestly, I'll do a lot. I didn't go right to the corner, so I'm going to have to rip that and redo it. Um, I, I don't. It's quiet. I'm like just hanging out on my own usually. But I have this thing with silence when other people are around. And apparently that has extended itself to um, all things YouTube. I don't like silence. I don't want silence. I don't, I don't want dead air either. So I feel like I got to talk constantly. And that just involves me telling lots of little jokes and trying to make you laugh. My hope is that I'm making all of you giggle, or some of you. 
And if that's the case, if one of you is out there laughing at me because you think I'm hysterical, then I have succeeded. Otherwise, just pretend like you thought I was funny. <laughs> Quilting compound says, I always talk to myself. Jordan, Georgia said, <laughs> Georgia said, you probably do and just don't realize it. <laughs> I mean, maybe I do. Maybe I do and I don't realize. I'll have to ask my mom next time she's up here. I'm like, mom, when I'm sewing and we're not talking, do I talk to myself? Oh, wait, I do. Not as much, though. Not as much, though. And I know this because I recall multiple times where I've said something while I'm doing something. I'm like, and I need to get that. And just like mumbling. And mom will go, what? And like, I wasn't talking to you. <laughs> so maybe I do. <laughs> Thanks, Georgia. <laughs> uh, Stephanie says she's laughing. Stephanie, I feel like you and I could crack each other up all weekend long. And you know what I realized? Stephanie's only a few hours from here, and I think she needs to come visit. You guys tell her in the chat. This one is off by a bit, but it's not here. I think it'll be okay. We're just going to trim, starch, and move on to the next one. Hello, Kathy. Somebody want to drop Kathy's channel in the chat, please? She wasn't here when we did the share, share, share. So let's give her a chance to share, share, share. How are you doing? I think Ian is the only moderator that's doing the links. Hello, Sean. And he stepped away, so when he comes back, we'll see if we can get him to drop your channel. Hello, S. Taylor says, you're always great company, Becca. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. You guys, don't forget, Sean and I will be live tomorrow morning. At what time? Is it 8 a.m.? Oh, my gosh. Ah! <laughs> Debbie says, well, sometimes I watch YouTube and talk to myself. Hey, listen, we could, we could be brothers or sisters or siblings. If you are part of the VIP program, don't forget Sunday is our Zoom. I will send out an email tomorrow morning with all the details to make sure you have the link in your inbox. But we will be on Zoom from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Time on Sunday. Ah! Hello, Karen Brunette. How are you? Merck says, Merck says, I say if you talk to yourself and get a response, you get an intelligent answer. <laughs> And who would think different? <laughs> I swear I just saw a light outside. They must be walking the dogs. Oh, it's nine o'clock. You know, awesome, Susie. Thank you. I am um, going to take a little intermission to go grab some water fill up my water bottle. So we're going to pause right here for a moment. Talk amongst yourselves. I'll give you a topic. Talking to yourselves. <laughs> ah! <laughs> we'll be right back.
Okay, wasn't that cool? I got to stretch. I got to get water. And it wasn't dead silence. Isn't that great? <laughs> and for those of you curious, no, the husband wasn't walking the dogs. I don't know what that light was. <laughs> Must have been my eyes playing a trick on me. Or Donna coming up my driveway. <laughs> All right, so... Now we're going to make the other part of this flying geese unit. We're going to take these and put it on the side. So we're just going to go do those same things. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. Hello, Teresa. Welcome to the live stream. Hope you're doing well. <laughs> Karen said, I love the 70s adult museum <laughs> movie music. <laughs> See, when I heard that, I was like, oh, this sounds like elevator music. I know where your mind is. All right. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is a kill all vibe. I was not thinking what you apparently are thinking. <laughs> oh, so funny. Question for everyone. How many quilts have you made or are going to make for Christmas presents this year? Uh, great question. Don't know. I've kind of gifted all my quilts as they've been finished. I haven't really saved any for Christmas, but I have decided um, a couple years ago that every year one person was going to get a quilt for me for Christmas. And I have the quilt, but I don't know who's going to get it. Shh. <laughs> what are you making? Debbie wants to know. I am working on this block it is block four for the 2023 designer mystery quilt it's using the sunny side up fabric from camille ross kelly and the block this month was designed by none other than the lovely Corey yoder herself <laughs> tiffany said zero is on my quilt list zero is on my christmas quilt list sorry Yeah, okay, I see what I did. It wasn't wrong. It's just flipped over. <laughs> Mary made a ton last year, so she's she is yelling in the chat, none! I did them all last year. All right, let's get these pressed. Hello, Frank. Why are we saying sorry? I must have missed something. Hey, Tiffany. Hey, all. I don't know why you said sorry, but hello. Katie with an E says, I just have one for my daughter. Oh, spell check. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> ah, gotcha. No worries. No worries. No worries. Need my pin. My iron's still on. That's good. Roop. If I sign up for VIP now, would I be able to do the Zoom this weekend? Yes, Michelle. Anybody that signs up for VIP before 2 p.m. on Sunday or 6 p.m. on Sunday when it ends, you're, you'll be able to get in there. If you don't have an email in your inbox with the Zoom info, you can always email me and I'll get you the link. Or you can just go to the VIP section of the website. And if you go to the events area in the VIP section, it'll have the link right there for you. <clears throat> oh, 
All right, these are good to go. Wow, how many of these? Wow, that's weird. Okay, we're going to ruin our flying geese units by putting more fabric on it. Okay, this is actually kind of interesting. Look, like, oh, let's see. Hold on. Let me hide all this stuff. Look at this. This is the block we're going to make. Let me bring it in. And we're doing it by taking these flying geese units that we just made, and we're going to put star legs on them. That's cool. So it's a double flying geese. What does it mean? What does it mean? It's a double flying geese. Okay, I have a choice. I can make the lines go any direction I want. So I'm gonna make them go straight this way. That's cool. Like, I'm kind of excited to see how this is gonna to come together now. Just keep adding corners to your flying geese unit and see what happens. That's probably the conversation that happened at Fat Quarter Shop when Corey Yoder was designing this block. Yeah. Just keep adding to it. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Wait. Okay. Shoo. I got <laughs> I thought I had my fabrics on the wrong sides. I was about to be like, uh, Houston, we have a problem. Wait. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because yeah, okay. Cross over it. I have to be very quiet. I'm hunting wabbit. Very quiet. Let's take some concentration. Oh, that's kind of cool. Do you guys see that coming out? Like, neat. Neat. Am I doing all four? Yeah. Okay. I am. I feel like I'm going to... One, two, three. Nope, I haven't just enough. Okay, cool. I thought I wasn't going to have enough squares. I have all of the squares cut. This is kind of neat, you guys. I might have to make more star blocks like this. That's kind of neat. Don't have a clue what to make this year, Susan says. Every one of my family has gotten quilts for me. Quilts of placemats, table toppers, wall quilts, bowl cozies, coasters, and mug rugs. Most have table runners, too. Wow. I am blessed with a family that has not received all those gifts from me yet. So I am at a journey in my quilting life where I can still give those things. And a lot of my family friends still haven't got one. So yay. I'll be making a tuffet for my hubby. Awesome. Karen is suggesting maybe do a bed runner. Bed runners are kind of a, like, I've been thinking about that a lot lately. So those are nice. Oven mitts and pot holders. Same technique for flying geese with star legs is part of the finishing for the designer mystery quilt. You will make more. Oh, yay. So Kathy, you must be working ahead. I do have the finishing kit here and I have it on my list of things to be like, okay, start the finishing kit now because I'm going to want this quilt to be in its finishing layout. And if there's anything I re I learned from the 2018 designer mystery quilt, I uh, put a lot of work into that finishing layout and a little bit along, a little bit every month is going to go a long way. So we'll see. Tote bags, that's a great idea. Comfort pillows are fun and easy, Debbie says. Paula says, I just turned 66 and I'm starting my quilting journey this year. Yay, congratulations. Mm, bed runners are fabulous for keeping feet warm in the winter. Great idea. Mert, looks like people are telling you they hope you feel better.
I don't know if I missed something, but if you're ailing from something, I hope you feel better too. Ba 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 ran. Ba 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 ran. Welcome to Friday night, the place where quilting and earworms combine. All right. This is so fun. I love it. Stay organized. Get over there. Oh, so fun. I really like a good block of the month. Like, just work on a little block every month. Break it down, and then in the end, you have a quilt. So great. <laughs> Look, that's the block we're making. Isn't that great? I don't know how many more times I can say that. Isn't that great? It's so great. I love it. It's great. <laughs> Uh-oh, this way. Yes. Double flying geese. Feel like the kid that found the double rainbow. It's a double flying geese. What does it mean? O M G. Those stripes, y'all. Like the overlap of the stripes. Hey, camera, focus. <laughs> It'll focus in a second. Three, two, right there, focus. Like they, they laid on top of one another if it would focus. It's got the background and the focus, but the stripes laid right on top of each other. You couldn't have planned that. Ba 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 ba. Oh, that one did too. What? What the what? What? Oh, that one was eh. All right, let's trim and... <laughs> okay, so Becca, you're singing my music. <laughs> Wait, oh, I about freaked out for a minute. I thought I cut the wrong spot because when I cut, I had this on the back end. But look, if I saved this, you guys, look, if I save this, uh-oh. How stinking cute is this? What? We're just going to save all of those. Hold up. I literally have no idea what I will do with those, but they'll come in handy in tiny piecing. Oh, Dominic's in. Hey, needle, listen. I'll tell you when you can let go of that fabric. I'll tell you also, it's not right now. Get in the hole. Get in there. Okay, I'm gonna save these for something fun later. Now I'm going to press. Donna's Stitches says, I've been playing around with Tiffany's 25 block patch blocks. They are a lot of fun. They are. Paula Tharp says, I was thrilled when I found two Nantucket summer 
layer cakes for regular price last week. Camille said on a live recently that her next collection will pair with Nantucket beautifully. Oh, wonderful. I can't wait. <laughs> Frank said, oh boy, I see another bin growing. Yeah, you do. <laughs> All right, there we go. That kind of looks like a little mountaintop, doesn't it? And then this way, it's the star. Oh no, that way it still looks like a little mountaintop. Look at that perfect little diamond right there. Oh, I love it. Okay, what are we going to do next? Come on. Let's see what the next... Oh, okay. So we're going to take these units no no not these we're gonna take these and we're gonna make two units thank you missy for subscribing woohoo we're gonna put them onto the ends just like this boom and flip it around do it again And then finger press, set it out of the way, and we'll do another one. And then we'll have all of our little components built, and it'll be time just to put our block together, I think. Boom. Okay. Let's do our pressing with this. Becca, we are going to have to get Tiffany into Tiffany. We are going to have to get with Tiffany and ha and learn to have and learn to piece little pieces. Tiffany works with little pieces. She's done some amazing things with little pieces. But perhaps the two of us could do a collab where we just do tiny piecing. We haven't done a live stream with just the two of us together in a minute. Maybe we could do some little piecing together. Hold me closer, tiny quilter. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing here. I didn't even put my starch on it. All right, now that we have those done, literally don't know what I'm, oh, I didn't make my star block yet. Okay, so I just skipped a step. We're gonna set these aside because this is gonna be the outer border of the block. We're gonna build out the star block, which should look like this is in the center. <clears throat> these are the star legs like this, here, 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 and here. And I actually like to look in the camera to make sure it's all laid out the right way because sometimes you see something jump out at you on the screen before you see it in person. And then these are gonna have the white fabric pointing towards the middle, just like this. And then we're gonna sew those together. Yep, that looks right. Hello, hello, said, started using the pressing pen. So helpful. It is. 
Hello, hello. Okay. That is going to press out, out. Oh, fun. Okay, so we're going to kind of make this like little point there. Do you see that? Where it's starting to come together? Oh, so great. So while I am pressing the next one together, I am going to go ahead and use the pen and the clapper and let this get really super flat because of all that bulk. I'm going to let it sit under the clapper for, oh, just leave that off. Keep capping it and I'm going to just grab it again in a second so it doesn't make any sense, right? That quarter shop has these in stock and I do have an affiliate link in the description box down below the video. You can also do exclamation FQS in the chat to get my affiliate link for Fat Quarter Shop. Once you're over there, just search for Acorn Pressing Pen. the top row. This one we're going to press in towards the middle. It's fun to see how these blocks come together, isn't it? It's just neat. Start out with a pile of fabric and then you end up with a beautiful block. Oh, so pretty. Hello, hello, says I'm flying to Richmond slash North Chesterfield on Tuesday for my nephew's wedding. My sister mentioned going to Williamsburg quilt show while there this week. Have you ever been to that quilt show? No, Williamsburg is about three hours. Oh, Williamsburg is about three hours away from me. So no, I have not been to any quilt shows in that area, um, but I'm sure it would be lovely. I didn't know there was one this week. That's fun. Janet said, morning, Becca. Just popped in to say hi and give you a thumbs up. Thank you. Just a reminder, guys, that we've got a couple of fun YouTube collaborations happening for you. Tomorrow, I will be live sewing with Sean and his channel at 8 a.m. And uh, Brecky with Sean, we're going to be working on our panda quilts together. And then maybe one Friday night, I'll have him here while we work on our panda quilts. It might not be until later in October because I'm pretty booked over the next several Fridays. But that's just something that kind of popped into my head that maybe we could do too. Um... Oh, and then Tiffany, Teresa, Ian, and I will be doing a live on Saturday, September 30th. The I, Whoever it was hello, hello that was talking about their nephew's wedding, I will be next weekend, so a week from tomorrow, I will be at the quilt show in Fredericksburg which is about an hour and a half or so away from Williamsburg. Is that the one you're talking about? The Sewing Expo in Fredericksburg? I'll be there. Can't get this lined up. There we go. Get that point. 
nest that seam, hold it tight, and it probably still slipped, but that's okay. Let's see how it looks. Not bad. ADM Eastern, yes. Exclamation Sean in the chat will get you a link to his channel. You can find the live, which is already scheduled, and click the little notify me button below it. That way, as soon as that live kicks off, you'll be notified that we're up and running on his channel. <clears throat> maybe it is Fredericksburg. <laughs> maybe it is Fredericksburg. Yes, I had my cities confused. Yes, I will be in Fredericksburg next week. I'll be there Friday most of the day. I'm going to be getting there around 10 a.m. when they open, and I'll probably leave about 3 p.m. so I can get home and have dinner with my family before I do my live stream. And then Saturday, I will be there from about 8 in the morning because I'm taking a class in the morning with Erin Grogan from Love So Modern. I'm gonna take both her curved piecing, which is on Friday, I think Friday afternoon actually, and then I'm taking a big stitch quilting on Saturday. I'm gonna take a hand quilting class with her, so that's gonna be great. But yes, if you see me there, say hi. I will just automatically tell you right now I will be at the quilt show. I will probably have a phone in my hand taking pictures and recording video clips. And I will just assume that nobody knows who I am. Because I'm really bad about that in public. I'm happy to talk with you. I'm happy to hug you. I'm happy to say hi. I'm happy to do all the things. But I just assume I'm a nobody. Nobody special, I mean. Not a nobody, but a nobody special. I assume I am just a quilter there with everybody else. Because I don't want to be that person that walks in thinking they're better than everybody else. I have a YouTube channel. You should know who I am. Nope. You don't know who I am. That's And that's okay. But I'd love to meet you if you're there. Okay. Is that in Maryland, Becca? No, it is in Virginia. Fredericksburg. Virginia, not Frederick, Maryland, Fredericksburg, Virginia. Okay, there is my block. It says that this should measure eight and a half by eight and a half. So I am gonna, there's lots of little seams in here. So I'm just gonna make sure that I'm hitting eight and a half by eight and a half. And I actually have a square ruler up here that would do this job a whole lot better that I haven't even broken out of the packaging yet. It is the 10 inch ruler. We're going to use this tonight. Isn't Road to California in Southern California? Licky Chicky say no one comes to Southern California, but I'm pretty sure Road to California is like in L.A., which is a pretty big show, right? Yeah, it's just a little bit big. So sizing it down is a good idea. Sherry McCarty, thank you for subscribing to the channel. I appreciate you. Oof, that felt like a lot, but my points look like they'll still be okay. There's the first part of the block. Look how cute that is. <laughs> Couple people have mentioned they love the smiley face. That's cute, right? I don't even know where I got it. I, don't, I, I think it came in a package or something. I thought it was cute. So there, there it sits. 
Okay, next step. Oh, just put the borders on. Okay, that's easy enough. I'm just gonna fold this and put it out of the way. So they go like this. Is that great? Let's put the sides on first. Debbie says, I love that block. Great job, Becca. Thank you. So this one, when I put it on, I am making sure that everything lines up. It should be the same size as this piece now, and it is. If I wouldn't have taken a second to stop and trim that and square it up, I would have been, uh, would have been struggling. I would have been on the struggle bus. I could have stopped and pinned this, but honestly, I it's still good. Without pinning, it was still good. Flip them, Becca. No. No. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I see what I did. It wouldn't be a live stream if it wasn't for Jack coming out to play. I was so focused on the white pointing in that I didn't pay attention to the other fabrics. I'll show you what everybody saw that I did not see as I started to sew. You're supposed to be continuing this ribbon look around the perimeter of the block. And so you want your green fabrics touching and I'll just show you. So what I had was I had it like this. No, I sewed it like that and it shouldn't be, it should be like this, like this and like this. Oh, that looks so much better. Yes. Yes, that looks right. I should have looked on the screen to begin with. <laughs> Let's try that again, shall we? You did a Debbie Becca. <laughs> look, look. These kind of look like upside down hearts. Do you see that? Cause I do. This by the way, we are gonna press the sides out. I mean, you're gonna press the sides open. You're gonna press the seams on the sides open. So we'll do that next. Make sure that that still looks right. It does. <laughs> Frank says, all the angels sing. <laughs> oh, you guys make me laugh. I am almost done with this block and we still got a few minutes on the live stream tonight. So if you have been working on something you would like the whole world to see, make sure to use exclamation Facebook to get a link over to the Facebook group, drop your photo and tell me what it is that you are working on. Give me a little story and we'll do a little sew and tell in just a couple moments. Lots of bulk in these, so it's going to be really important that I, I maybe didn't need the Acorn Easy Press pen on the first few seams, but right now, whew, definitely need it. And then we're going to put the clapper on it, especially right over that middle where there's a whole bunch of bulk. Kathy's asking, how in the world did you rip that fast? 
I'll show you later. Basically, you just put your seam ripper, the little hook of your seam, in against your stitches, and you just push it through. You put the ball point down into the seam, and you just slice it through. When I have bulky seams like this, I have been known to come in and starch from the top as well. And maybe this is overkill, I don't know. But this is just what I've been doing lately. Give it a good bit of heat from the top as well. And then clap it. <clears throat> There you go. And now we're going to press this one open. And then we'll put the last two seams in, the last two sides on. Two more seams and we'll be done and good to go. I feel like with this block, pressing it open actually is adding more bulk than just letting it press out. But I'm going to follow the stitching. I'm going to use my hot dry iron with no starch on it first, just to get this to lay open because there's so much bulk in here that it doesn't even want to lay open. But the heat will get it to adjust a little bit. And now I'll just come in from this side. Give it some starch. Put some heat on it. What wood are your clappers made of? Honestly, I can't remember, but if you do exclamation clappers, they are from a company called Hard Rock Woodworks and they have an Etsy shop. They are located in my area. Can't remember what wood this is. You're welcome, Kathy. She says, I've never done that. Thanks for the tip. I actually learned that from Teresa. Okay, two more seams. Look how great that's coming. We're going to do the top and the bottom, but we're going to make sure that our fabric finishes out like that ribbon. Kind of looks a little bit like a card, uh, card block, a card trick block. Can't talk. A lot of bulk right here. I'm not pinning every point, but that's because I am stopping when I get to a point and I am holding my finger on the next intersection. And then once my needle gets into that intersection, I'm gonna stop and grab the next point that needs to be nested, hold that, and then sew through. And we're gonna hope for the best on this, which way are we pressing? These are supposed to be pressed open too? Really? That's because that one seam right there, isn't it? Yep, it sure is. I think I'm going to not press them open because I feel like, well, okay, fine. I'll press it open. It's this seam right here in the middle that there's a ton of bulk and that's why it's telling you to press open so that that will lay a little bit flatter. But these down here are paying the price. Ooh, these are kind of bulky too, aren't they? Okay, that's fine. We'll just do what it says. I'm gonna use the hot dry iron to get the seam to lay open so they can starch it and use the clapper. Oopsies. Nice and open, please. Maple on their Etsy shop. Thank you says it's made out of maple on their Etsy shop. 
I'll have to remember that. I feel like mine has a bit of redwood in it too, though. I feel like we had that conversation because I asked him to make it and I think he offered me the option of wood and I feel like redwood might have been something I got to choose, but don't quote me on that. Yeah, no, mine is striped. Like this, I think redwood is in there. I chose. I feel like mine has two different woods in it, so. Good night, Donna. All right, one more stitch, one more seam. Almost there, people, almost there. The last scenes take the longest sometimes, I feel like. Ugh. I actually think pressing the seam open took longer than sewing the seam. <laughs> Let's get this in here. Heat, heat, heat. Right there. Come on. Come on, boy. Get over. There we go. Come on. Almost there. Almost there. Yeah. All right. Ooh, hot. Use my heat sucker. Get the heat out. I just got here. Was that block hard? Not really. Not really. Time consuming. Yes. But the way the instructions are laid out, it actually makes it a pretty easy block. No, the acorn best press pen does not gum up. The residue does not gum up your needle. I haven't had any problems with my needle. Yes, the trick to lay them flat is to starch the seams, as well as use a clapper. The combination of starching your fabric and uh, start either starching your block or this. And the reason why I'm liking this right now, it does take a little bit of extra work, but let me just show you how flat this block is. Like, full disclosure, before I sew it into its final resting place, I will give this block a good starch one last time. But the reason why I like this is because I like adding starch to my blocks because it makes them lay super, super flat, nice and crisp, and it just makes for a better product when I'm working with it. So what I normally would have done had it not been for this is every step along the way, I would want to starch. I would have starched the fabric before I cut it, and then I would have starched the block, every little piece as I was making it, and that just adds a ton of buildup on your block that you don't really need. This gets you the same product with less chemicals, less liquid. You could still use Best Press or whatever in the pen, but I'm using the Best, uh, the Acorn Easy Press liquid. And that's the block. It does have some wonky edges. If you see over here, it's not completely square just yet, but I'll take it over to the table and I will square it up. I actually wait to square these until all of my blocks are done. So what I do next, and I wanna show this to you, is I fold it up. So there's my beautiful block, and then I'll fold it up and I'll put it in here 
And I want to show this to you because I talked about this last time and I just want you to understand the OMG factor. For this block, this is all of my scrap. Like, look at this huge chunk. That's my scrap from this fabric. Look at all of that. I can make this block probably a couple more times over. I don't think I have enough of the background, but I definitely have enough of all of the floral prints if I wanted to make this block a couple more times. Look at all these pieces. There's the background that I have, and it was a fat quarter. Now it's about a fat eighth. Maybe I do have enough, I don't know. Like, all of this extra. That's great. I'm gonna take my little, I'm gonna play with those tomorrow. These I keep all folded up in the envelope. So every month, once I'm done, I take my scrap pack plus my instructions and then I fold up my block and I put everything back in the envelope. I'm not gonna fold this up yet because I wanna take a picture of it and use it for the thumbnail. Um, so I'm gonna leave it flat, but I will end up putting it back in here so I can keep everything nice and organized. I have enough fabric from this block of the month to easily make two quilts for sure. And I think that's phenomenal. Okay, so there you go. That is my block. Let's go look and see what you guys have been working on tonight. We've got a few minutes before 10 o'clock is here. We're gonna go over to the sew and tell screen. I'm gonna refresh the page so we can see what's out here. Maybe there's not redwood in that, by the way. I don't know. I don't know. I just know they made it for me and I absolutely love it. Okay. We're going to change this to new posts. And starting with Yvonne Davidson. This is the quilt top that she made from two jelly rolls. Sorry, I've got something in my eye. That is awesome. That's a really easy thing to do. It kind of looks a little bit like one of those coin slot quilts. I bet mom could do that next time she's up here. She's always looking for something to do with the jelly roll. Looks like we've got somebody waiting to get in. No? Okay. I don't know why I keep saying one. Thank you, Heather. Annette Dombrowski says, Hey, Becca. I'm quilting a blanket for my granddaughter. The center is for the baby quilt I made 10 years ago for her crib. She will be 10 in December, so this will fit her new bed. She is a purple cheetah fan. Aw. I love it. Oh, wow. Look at you go with your free motion. Way to go. Nice. So proud of you. Aw, look at that. Very nice. Jennifer Smith said, working on the Taos block of the month, these diamonds are wearing on my nerves. <laughs> I actually saw that block of the month pop up in my feed today. I was like, ooh, that looks nice. And now that uh, you said it's working on your nerves, I'll just keep walking right past that. <laughs> Susie says, this is what I've been working on. Let me scroll up so I can see it. Ironing batik fabric for cluck cluck sew pumpkins and quilt pattern. It's 58 by 72 and I'm turning it into a king sized quilt. I have 12 fat quarters on the Martelli table ironed along with the stem and leaf batiks. There is yardage being ironed above the table for borders and binding, and there are 12 more boutique fat quarters in the mailbox that arrived today. I will be making the king sized quilt in quadrants and the and then quilt those and then sew them together. My little Bernina, the three grunge half yards will go into the cluck cluck sew mini pumpkins quilt for a table topper. I have more grunge fat quarters in another room to use for my mini quilt. I need to overhaul my long arm machine and table before I can get any quilting done. It's a Singer 201 that's been stretched. While living off the grid, the sewing machine motor died and I mounted a vacuum motor to it in order to finish a customer's quilt. Okay, so I think the takeaway here was she is ironing batik fabric for the cluck cluck sew pumpkin quilt that will measure 58 by 72. 
She's turning it into a queen, a king, and these are the 12 fat quarters that she's working on ironing. There you go. And that's the pattern she's doing. Awesome. Susan also said, two parts of my 2021 spooky box hocus pocus quilt. I now have all the sawtooth star blocks done, the corner dark friendship star blocks done, and I am working on the last Halloween color friendship star blocks so I can hopefully finish this top this weekend. You guys can't hear it in the background because it's very faint and my microphone won't pick it up, but, um, well. Yeah, my micro. This is a lapel microphone, so it's not designed to pick up the background noise like that. But my daughter is in her room upstairs, so it's like next door and upstairs, playing her saxophone, and I just hear it like I can just hear the melody and like it's so. I I mentioned I just love that she is so into all these instruments. Like I just love it. Like just love it. Katie with an E says she's cutting pieces for her project Tressa Girl. Norma Loveless says I just got it sandwiched to quilt for Project Linus. Awesome. Folks, uh, folks in the chat are saying that they like seeing everybody's projects. I do too. Michelle says I took a class Wednesday in making memory bears. I had fun. I just couldn't finish because of Issues they had with the computer set up to be able to trace and cut out the pieces. Aw. Hopefully you'll be able to make some progress. Elaine Sta Ellen Stanley, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Ellen Stanley says, I don't have a project to show tonight. Well, I think this is much better. So I thought I'd show a picture of my granddaughter sewing on her great, great, great grandmother's sewing table that my hubby refurb refurbished for me. I love seeing kids sew. Oh, she looks like she's so happy. Yay. I'm glad you're spending quality time in your sewing room with your granddaughter. That's awesome. Kathy Hoffman says, Missouri Star, world's largest spool of thread pattern, finally finished it on Saturday, which was Jelly Roll Day. That's a great way to do a Jelly Roll race. You make your Jelly Roll race, and then you do the spool on the top and the bottom. That's awesome. Shirley says, this is my creation from the harvest delivery pattern. Misty says, deciding on what border to go with next on my son's Indian quilt. Let's pull this up. Maybe you guys will have some recommendations. Look at all oh my goodness. Look at all those flying geese. Holy caboodles. Wow. That's a lot of work. And it's gorgeous. And it looks like it's all fatigues. And I love it. So she's got this option. And this option. So one, two. I don't see the difference. Green, yellow, blue, green, yellow. Oh, it's on how they're pointed. Should they be pointing diagonal? Or I think this one. I would go with this one. I would do this one where they're where they look like up and down buttons. I would do that one. It is. S. Taylor says it's great that she plays all the time. It is. She's actually um, going to try out for district orchestra. And so she's practicing getting ready for the audition in December. Anne Marie, awesome! The Center for Among the Stars is all done. She said, Thank you for motivating us to sew this one up. You and I are at the same spot. I got to figure out what I'm going to do for borders. I probably will do the borders that are in the book. But it might not happen before Christmas. <laughs> Deb says, working on this denim and flannel quilt for my granddaughter's one-year-old Great Dane. <laughs> Stephanie said, holy, holy, LOL. <laughs> Georgia McCroy, I'm in chain piecing 
<laughs> HE double hockey sticks here. But this is going to be a beautiful king size quilt when I'm done. Winding ways block in Civil War repro fabrics. Oh, wow. I love it. Cindy Clemens said these fine geese is part of a montage block of the month from Karen Montgomery. I sew the cut off HSTs together. So at the, so at the end, I figure something out and the last two pictures are part of the prism block of the month. I watch your, I watch your YouTube and others every day or week, but my device doesn't always let me comment, but I do hit like and subscribe. I'm learning so much from you and the others prayers to your mom and stepdad for the all. Oh, thank you. Oh, love it. See? See? Wow! Look at all, that's all excess fabrics that she just saved. And look what, oh no, it's not. It's the block of the month. I'm sorry, I'm getting tired. I'm sorry. Oh, and the look, you guys, she's using, um, do you see those? Caught in the wild right here. Do you guys know what these are? These rulers along the back, those are Fallon's rulers. So be it quilts. Those are Fallon's new little rulers. These are her um, trimmers. The they're they're meant to trim little blocks. Two and a half, three and a half, four and a half. I think it is. You'll have to check those out. And then back to that one earlier today. Let's refresh and see if anything new came in. Do 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 do. do. Still says one member request. Ah, there we go, Carolyn. We got you. Wow, Barbara. Here, let me do new posts so I can get everybody in order. There we go. She is getting ready to quilt this on her Viking. Wow, look at that. I'm zooming all the way in so we can see all the goodness here. That's smart how you have that hung with the clamps. I need to find a way to hang my quilts outside so I don't have to keep having my husband do it. Very nice. Rochelle si Simons, this was my first ever quilt. Just finished it last month and sent it to the long arm quilter. Love it. So pretty, so cute. I love the black sashing in between all the different colors. Frank McNett says, Jace's box of balls. <laughs> I get it. Air <laughs> basket balls. <laughs> I like it. I see I see blue balls in there. <laughs> I love it. That's great. It took me a second to see it, but I see it. Susie says I'm working on the chandelier quilt and these are my blocks. Wow, Ian, working hard on Margot the Boxer from Legit Kits and can't wait for this to be finished. I know, I know, you're ready. You're ready, dude. I hear you. I'm right there with you. I need to work on Vortex. Holly, oh, wow. Holly says, some more FPP blocks for my future garden quilt. The sun will be the middle block and then there will be various FPP flower blocks arranged all around. I made four of these double flower ones, two on the left and two right leaning. Haven't fully finished out the layout yet and the other four styles I have done up already. Looking to make a grass or lawn FPP border. Anyone have any patterns or links to one? Wow. Oh, this is breathtaking. Wow. That's cool. And then she's got her flowers. So pretty. Oh my goodness. I can't wait to see this finished. Good night, Flo. 
Christine says, I'm cutting orange strips for 30 pumpkin mug rugs. Wow. Look at all those oranges. And then we're back to the coin slot quilt. We'll refresh one more time, see if anything else is in here. I don't see anything new. So what does that mean? That means it's time to end. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here because I'm leaving and the stream is ending. But you know where you can go? You can hop over to Handmade by Ying because I believe she is live right now. So what I'll do is grab the link for her live stream and I will drop it in the chat. So if my computer will start working so that you guys can hop over and show her some love on her live tonight. Give me one second. I'll get you the link for that. Do, do, do. Don't forget if you are a part of the VIP tonight on Sunday at two o'clock PM Eastern time, we will be live on zoom and I'll send out all the notifications for that tomorrow. It's not too late to join VIP. If you are interested in that, just give me a second to get that link for you. Here it is. Oopsies. Stop. <laughs> it didn't want to work. I can't do anything. Like, I'm, there we go. <laughs> Here's the link to Donna's live stream, guys. We're going to end the video. And if you are still here, the video will automatically direct you over to her live stream. So take care. Have a good night. And I'll see you guys Tuesday.